So few reminders before I take your requests on problems you'd like to see. Um, you have, you took part of your final yesterday. You're taking the other part on final exam day. So for you guys, final exam day in math is Tuesday, May 23rd. Um, you are allowed to still create a three by five note card, but you do have to turn it in when you turn in your test. And know that the review is modeled after the actual test, just with different numbers. And the blue puzzle piece is an assignment. It will go in as missing if you don't do it. The last day that I am accepting it, no exception, is Monday by midnight. So like okay. you have until 11.59 that day to turn it in. I am not sneaking Schoology after that, no matter how much you beg, cry, how much, how many times your parents ask. I'm telling you now, how to turn in by Monday. You had a whole hour today to work on it, so you should have at least one submission in. And then Monday, we can go over any more questions you still want to see after that, but then that's it. Then you can like go home, do it, make sure it's turned in. So then I'm also recording all my classes, just FYI. Maybe they ask some different questions in you. And now I can take requests. Any questions though about finals and all that? We do not have to try on Monday. Monday is like a super short day. All right, then what requests do you have from the final, Jorge? Did you say 16? 16. Okay, so the table of values below represents G of X, the population in millions of people X years after the year 2010. And we need to pick two statements that are true, or it doesn't say two. It just says which of the statements are true. So I call it, oh, it does say two. Like two that's fine. So, so Washington is one city, and then Camville is another. So they give you one as table and one as an equation. They're not the same function. Um, based on how this equation is set up, for H of X, I know it might be hard to see, but you also have a paper with it. What type of function are we dealing with? Hmm. We really only learned like <laughs> this semester, so. Which one of the types we learned this semester? Quadratic is one of them. Is this a quadratic? No. no, what is it? Which is called a ladder, whoever said it? Um, exponential. An exponential function. All right, and I know it's exponential because it's in this basic format. So this is something that I would put on my note card. All right, exponentials and quadratics were the main ones. Um, y equals a times b to the x is my exponential. And then my quadratic is the y equals x squared. That's like the minimum. So yeah, when we do the x's and y's, they usually stay x and y. Everything else gets filled in with a number. So given that, we could pull out certain information about this exponential. So this is more like just on a side note. This is about this problem. What does the A stand for? In exponential functions, the number that's in the A spot is always my, not my X, my initial amount, my starting amount. So I can tell for G of X, that function that the starting amount was five and this is in millions of people so five million people is what they started at and then what did the other function start with four million people so then yeah we can compare it that way do you guys remember what the b is for so we have a special name for it it's called the common ratio. So it's what we multiply by each time to get the next number. So in this one, 
Does it look like we're multiplying by anything? No, so X's are just X's, but maybe we can't see because they're skipping over on the X. See that? So if I did have like a one, two, three, um, four, five, six, then we can see a pattern probably then between. So I don't know what it's increasing by each time. We'll see if that's like super necessary to figure out. But yeah, so the X's don't go necessarily in order. In this one, you can see that it's multiplying by 1.025. So your common ratio could be like times it by two if it's doubling or tripling, something like that. But you can also write it as one plus or minus R. So this one is adding what? Two point, it's growing by 2.5% each year. Um, so that's like things you can figure out based on the equation and like compare it to the case. So we need to select two that apply. So would you say that both cities had a population of 5 million people in 2010? Yes or no? Okay, G of X had a population of 5 million people, but did H of X? So then don't take that one. Because the other one didn't. Um, the population of Watson, the G of X function, is larger than the population of Canville in 2010. Did you say that that's true or false? I would say it's true because this one had 5 million, this one had 4 million. So I would say that one. And it did say that X is here since 2010. So at the very start, our initial amount is what we're comparing in those parts. All right, Watson population experienced linear growth. So what does linear mean? A straight line. So that would be adding the same amount each time. So that's probably why it looks all weird. You can't tell if it's multiplying in this one or not. Um, and then it says Canville's population experienced exponential growth. Is that true? Yeah, we did say that this was exponential. So I'm going to click it, but then again, I feel like we need a little more information for that one. So let's see what the last one says. Um, it says both cities exhibit exponential population growth. Did you say that that's true? The second one does. I don't know about the first one because the X's aren't going up by one. So. The Y's certainly are. It doesn't look like we're multiplying by the same number to get the next one, right? Because exponentials grow at a really fast rate. So I would say that the last one is not true. So it definitely has to be the two in the middle. And yours might be chosen, but it has to be the two. The questions on that? Okay, then questions on others. Number six. Okay, so number six, see the good thing about having the packet is that even with a Wi-Fi lab, you can take notes still. Um, but it says the value of a house is appreciating. What does that mean? Is it getting bigger or smaller? Getting bigger, a depreciating, sorry, I said that weird. Depreciating would be getting smaller. Um, so this one's appreciating at the same percentage each year. The graph shown below represents the value of the house in hundred thousands. Um, which equation represents the relationship between Y, the value of the house, and X, the year since the value of the house was tracked? So looking at this graph, what type of function are we dealing with? Okay, Chris said exponential, would you agree? You can also tell from this part that it's appreciating at the same percentage each year. When you hear that, you should be thinking exponentials because you're multiplying each time. So then which of these answers is definitely not the answer? The first one, because that would be linear. That one's in y equals mx plus b, not exponentials. The rest of these are only 
two of them are actually growth, which two are growth. Okay, yeah, this one is decay. How do you know? Because of the part that's attached to the exponent. So if the V is greater than one, it's growth, because that would have to have been the one plus R. If V is less than one, then it's decay. So because this is smaller than one, I know that's decay, and it said it's appreciating, not decaying. So we're not going to take that one. So now it's a 50 50 shot. Um, the two things right here are pretty similar. These are different. You might be able to tell from that. What position is the three and the two in of our exponential equation? Our starting amount. Can you tell the starting amount from the graph? What is my starting amount? Two. Good. So my y intercept is my starting amount. It's my a. So since that's a two, then it must be this one. Two for the a. Yep, that is it. Did someone submit this? Is that marked as the right answer? Okay. So then questions on others. Questions on others. Number four. Okay, average rate of change. That comes up in every single math class from now on, just so you know. When you hear average rate of change, you should be thinking of a certain formula. What is it? <laughs> okay, either you all had an answer for that or you're talking about other things. But yeah, so average rate of change, that would be a good formula to put on your note card. Now, you can tell it from sometimes graphs, sometimes tables. They don't give us either of that in this one. What they do give us is an equation. And in each of those situations, they always tell you where they want you to calculate the average rate of change between something, like a certain interval. Our intervals are from five to seven. So in order to use this formula, I normally need coordinates, which they don't give me. They do give me the x's, so I could, I know the x of my coordinate, but I need to figure out my y's. How could I do that? You could graph it and then see where x is five, what that y is, and um, what the y is when x is seven, you could. What's another way? You could plug it in. Um, the equations in function notation, it has x's in it. So really all you have to do is plug in the five and the seven, and that can give you the missing part of your coordinate. So then with something like this, I did it earlier. So I know that this one was, I think, 96. Am I wrong? Hold on, let me put it in. I'm asking for what f of 5 is. So 4 in, and then parentheses 5 squared minus 3. It equals that's 97. Okay, so I guess I didn't remember it from earlier. So one of my coordinates is 5, 97. The other one is when you plug in the 7. So anywhere that there's an x, now we're plugging in a 7. That'll give us the y when x is 7. So then you plug that in, that's 193, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, that sounds right from what I did earlier. I remember. So then now that you have coordinates, you could just label them x1, y1, the other is x2, y2, and then you plug it in. So the way that I have it, I have 193 minus 97 on top and 7 minus 5 on the bottom. I know 7 minus 5 is 2. The other one, I need a calculator. So 193 minus 97 is 96. 
And then 96 divided by two is what? We we'll also reduce that part. So once you divide it by two, you get 48. That's how you get your average weight of change. Does that make sense? Know that formula, know how to figure out your coordinates, and then plug it in. The label and then plug it in. From there. All right, other questions that we have? Okay, so complete the square to reveal the vertex form and minimum value of the standard form equation. So x squared plus 4x plus 7. So what's the best way to do this? That would be good use of time on your time. You guys could figure out your minimum, right? How could you figure out that? Um, By yeah. using Desmos and looking where? At the vertex. So let's do that. Because there's tons of ways you could solve it. I think actually remembering the steps for completing the square might not be some of your strong suits. So x squared plus 4x plus 7. All right, look at your vertex. It is negative 2, 3. Now notice that for the minimum, it only has one number. So I don't know that we necessarily talked about this, but the minimum is technically just the y value. Okay, so maybe put that on your note card. The minimum is the y value of your vertex. So the vertex you could calculate by typing in the equation, and then the minimum is going to be the y of the vertex. So then that narrows us down to two problems that it could be, not problems, answers. So we can eliminate these two. Okay, because my vertex was negative two, three. Now, these are written in vertex form. I will provide you the formula for vertex form, but I will not tell you how to use it on test day. Do you guys remember what letters of the vertex form make up your vertex? HK. So looking at the numbers in that, in that position, which one is more likely my answer? A. And if you're like, but that has the wrong sign, H always has like the opposite sign of how it looks in the equation. So like it looks positive here, but really it's negative. Like that's how it always is. Because if you plug in a negative two, it looks something like that. What happens to the double negative? It becomes a positive. So that's why it looks like that in our final answer. So you would have to know that vertex is HK, um, but I am providing you this on the text. Okay, questions on this one? Do we have time for one more? So what other questions do we have, if any? Camille? Number five. Number five. And we can ask questions on Monday too, or over the weekend. But we have this function. Does it have a maximum or a minimum? You can actually tell that without graphing. So maximum or minimum? It has a minimum. Because since there's no negative right here in front of the x squared, then we know that it opens upward like a smile and it would have a minimum versus a maximum. When in doubt, I'll put it in decimals and look at it. What's the value of my maximum or minimum? Okay. I agree with you. That, again, you can tell without graphing because you have it in vertex form. So you know that your vertex is HK. 
H is always opposite of how it looks. So my vertex is negative three, negative four. And your minimum is the y value of that. So good. And then what are the zeros? That I feel like one of them has to be negative three though. But I don't know. Let me put in a calculator. X plus three in parentheses and then minus four. And then minus four. So my zeros are negative five and negative one. Is that what you guys said? Yeah. Okay. okay. I don't know how it was going to do that. Negative five and negative one are those. Two? Um, boys in the front, make sure you pick up all that trash if you haven't already. What is this? I have to sign it. 